the Stanley Hotel, founded by F. O. Stanley in 1907. In opening in 1909, the Stanley Hotel is known as one of the most haunted hotels in U.S. history. <laughs> I can't see. Are you tired? I maybe. <laughs> There's like, feels like there's stuff in my eyes. It's 3.48 in the last night. 3.48. A.M. My mouth is full. Practically a household name, many seek out the Stanley Hotel to have their own haunted experiences. But if you plan on visiting the Stanley Hotel yourself, you'll find the journey is half the experience. Located high in the Rocky Mountains, more than 7,500 feet above sea level, the view is breathtaking. Although Stephen King was inspired by the Stanley Hotel to write The Shining in the 1970s, the majority of the film was shot at Timberline Lodge on Mount Hood, Oregon, in parts of England. Arriving at the Stanley Hotel, the first thing you notice is the amazing view and the feeling of absolute seclusion from the outside world. Surrounded by mountains on almost every side you look, the hotel overlooks Estes Park. The Stanley has had its share of famous guests in the past, such as Theodore Roosevelt in 1915, Stephen King, Molly Brown, survivor of the Titanic, Jim Carrey, and many others. Our goal? Travel to the infamous Stanley Hotel. Stay overnight in room 401 on Friday the 13th, the Stanley Hotel's 100th anniversary. Utilizing the newest video equipment available, digital audio recorders, and EMF detectors. We hope to capture evidence of this notoriously haunted hotel for ourselves. Our team consists of myself, Stacy Van Orman, owner of Dark Minds Productions and True Investigations, Sam, Kellen, and Nicole. Room 401, one of the most sought after rooms at the Stanley Hotel, and said to be haunted by the ghost of Lord Dunraven. When we had first gotten there, I had taken some photos right outside of our window, uh, room 401, and off to the left, uh, I was taking some pictures of the mountains in the background, 
and I didn't really notice that the curtains were moving um, till toward the end, a fourth or fifth shot. And so I zoomed in the camera and uh, went to look at, uh, see if I could see who was down there, and the curtains uh, were released. The person had backed up or whatever it was. And I didn't realize till later when we had the photos examined that there wasn't anyone in the windows. This used to be the Nanny's Lounge. Are you familiar with that history of the room? No. Okay, this was the Nanny's Lounge. So they would meet in here and they'd open up these doors to the hall. They'd go up and open up the bell tower, okay? And then they'd open these windows. That way, what did they have? They had a breeze, okay, coming through. So then they'd be sitting here, and remember they're dressed in Victorian clothing. It's like 120,000 degrees in here, right? And so they'd be sitting here, and obviously they'd unbutton a few buttons. That's when Lord Dunraven, an English Earl, and he had brothels in London. Did you see his picture downstairs? Yes. Yeah. Okay, that's Lord Dunraven. This used to be his land. It got taken away from him because he got it illegally. So he's upset. Right. Mm. This should have been his land. His hotel, and those are his nannies. That's awesome. <laughs> Got it. Now, was this room over here for uh, like uh, tuberculosis? Like, little... like, what was? No, not no. at all. This no. is like their little breakfast area, just like oh, it is now. Because this is a meeting room. Okay. okay. The closet is still there. It's all the original building. Realizing the difficulty we are going to have completing a thorough investigation of the Stanley Hotel with multiple power sources and other guests. We decided to enjoy and explore this beautiful estate at every opportunity. Manor House. Sweet. <laughs> um, several years ago, there was a couple, a couple staying in the room, and the man had left the room to go downstairs, and I think he was going to buy some champagne, is what I was told. Mm -hmm. So she had decided to relax and take a bubble bath. So oh, okay. she's in there soaking in the tub. Mm -hmm. Lord Dunraven has a seat right there in that chair. Okay? Well, so imagine you're in there, the door is open. She's thinking it's her husband because you can kind of see something out here. Then she looked more closely. She plainly saw Lord Dunraven sitting there. What is she going to do? She screams. She gets out of the tub. She wraps a towel. Mm -hmm. She runs down to the lobby. That man's in my room. <laughs> and that's Lord Dunraven. Now that was several years ago. Okay? Whoa, where are you picking that up at? Just standing in the middle of the room? Of course, the Stanley is a fully operational hotel with many other guests. And unfortunately, it's not possible to turn off the power during our investigation. So our EMF detector is completely unreliable. 
Although it's a fantastic tool and one we plan to use in the future, it's one of the many tools we are unable to get accurate readings from because of the power running in the building. The electromagnetic field detector, also known as the EMF detector, detects fluctuations in electromagnetic fields, commonly thought to detect ghosts when picking up on low electromagnetic fields that have no source. That's 217? No, not the nanny, the housekeeper. The housekeeper lady. Who she likes you, she'll put away all your clothes. Oh, that's right. She doesn't like you. She'll probably go around. That's what? where Stephen King is staying and Jim Carrey. Is that the one that Jim Carrey stayed in? Mm -hmm. That's one. Apparently, when they were filming Dumb and Dumb. Yeah, they were filming Dumb and Dumb. Here in Colorado. Uh, so, what I'm happens in the here. closet? Sure, okay. Actually, if I have a volunteer, okay, <laughs> would you like to volunteer like to do, and videotaping? I need a female, you guys. What I like um, to do, yeah. I was on my tour, I asked for a lady to volunteer since he liked the nannies and he had the brothels. Mm -hmm. And um, I'll ask you to come in here and you just, oops, that's okay. Scoot that stuff aside, oh, yeah. stand in there and just say, Lord Dunraven, please come see me. Mm -hmm. Okay, probably about 40% of the time. Get me out of here, okay? <laughs> or they'll feel like caressing on the back of their head, maybe a pinch or a tug of the hair. So, do you want to volunteer? <laughs> do it, Sam. Come do on. it. You'd be sorry you didn't if you didn't. Yeah, <laughs> this We're is all your here. chance. Now, what am I supposed to say? Just come on in come and stand there, and we want to be able to hear you say, Lord Dunraven, please come see me. Okay, do I close the door? Yes, I will close it for you. Okay. <laughs> okay? okay. <laughs> say it now, Lord Dunraven. Lord Don Raven, please come see me. Okay, I'm gonna close it. I'm gonna give you about 30 seconds to a minute. If you feel uncomfortable, please let me know and I'll help you out. <laughs> okay? Usually it's a big group in here, so I'm telling mm -hmm. you other stories mm -hmm. by now. Um, she should feel a different change of the climate, you know, very, mm -hmm. hot or, or very, very hot or very cold in there. Obviously, the elevator backs up to that closet, mm -hmm. so that's going to cause a little disturbance sometimes. When Jason was here, though, he said, I know there's an elevator, but if you go in there, it sounds like a party's going on. Really? Okay? So that's the story of that closet. Mm. How you doing? Good. You, you want out? Cold. <laughs> it's cold. cold. It's cold. How cold? Like way cold? Way cold. Okay? Do you want to come out? I'm all right. Okay. <laughs> Do you want to stay in there for another minute? Okay, cool. So while you're in there, I'll tell them about room 418. Did you know 418 is the most active room in the hotel? Okay. No. Okay? And as recently as January, we had a guest staying in there, and she was in there with her son. Okay, now I'm out. Did he touch back? I don't want to be touched. So he touched the back of your neck? Yeah, I'm okay, but I don't Good. want to be touched. Good, there you go. Yay. Thank you, Lord Dunn. Yay. And she asked for a volunteer to go into the closet. I volunteered to go in, and while I was sitting in the closet, I was touched on my neck, and it was really, really creepy. Um, I'm fine with seeing things, but I'm not okay with being touched. She had me in there for like three minutes, and I was fine in the beginning. Nothing was happening. There was no hot or cold fluctuation. There was no noises. Nothing creepy was going on. And then I felt something brush the back of my neck right here. And it was extremely cold and extremely creepy. And I came running out of the closet like a butthead. Um, it's probably the creepiest thing that's ever happened to me. I was working the front desk before I was at the tour department. And I was new here. And so, you know, you're new to a haunted hotel. You're not going to fess up right away if something happens because they're going to think something. So I was talking to a lady that was sitting in those big brown chairs that are in the lobby. And we're just conversing back and forth, and all of a sudden we start to hear music coming from the music room. I'm talking to a lady in the lobby, and we're conversing, trying to pass the time together, and I start hearing music come from the music room. Well, I had been told about Mrs. Stanley playing the piano, and so, not being able to leave the front desk area, I said to her, can you please go down there and check on this for me? And she came back and I said, now look at the other piano that's in the lobby too, make sure there's no one there. And then we have music piped in, so I made sure that was turned down. She came back and she goes, it's from in there, it's from in there. 
And I'm like, okay, the heck with the job, I'm out here. I'm going to find a ghost, right? So we both went down there together. It was dark in the room. So I reached my hand around the corner, flipped on the light, no more music. Here's the odd part. The lid was down on the piano. The keys had been removed. Oh, They were down in Boulder being cleaned. Oh, no kidding. Yay! That's awesome. I had my first thing happen. What is that? Do you hear that? Yeah, I hear it. I don't I still know, know what is. it is. It's driving me nuts. <laughs> Wait, now we're in the music room at the Stanley Hotel. And right behind us is the piano that Mrs. Stanley used to play all the time. Apparently, it's been rumored that people will hear this piano play when they're not in the music room. And it's completely empty. That turns it on. I think it's a ventilation. Mm, that's what do you hear? No, no? Not it's ventilation, I think. No, I hear, I hear sing song. Dun, dun. Not ventilation. I didn't actually hear musical notes coming from the piano. I had heard notes coming from around us, so it seemed like high pitches. I can't really narrow it down to where it was coming from. Sam had said that she had seen uh, or heard musical notes uh, that kind of like a song. Um, and she was positive of it. So uh, I, I was hearing something. I just couldn't make out what it was. We were all walking around and looking around. I was looking at the piano. And while I was walking into the music room, I could hear a melody playing. Um, I don't believe anybody else could hear it, and I was listening out of the corners of the room, and it was coming from the left-hand far corner of the room, and it was just a soft melody. It was like da 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 dum, da 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 dum, <laughs> over and over and over and over again. Do you hear it? <laughs> don't expect me to see or hear or sense anything. <laughs> My, my wife has all sorts of experiences. Uh, she asks me to check, see if there are actual people in places, and I look for her because I don't ever see anything or no, nothing like that ever happens for me. And people, you know, I, I guess I've been labeled a skeptic for this, but I'm, it's not really that. It's, uh, you know, the, I, I believe in that kind of the spirits and stuff. I don't, I don't see them, I don't hear them, and usually I, I'm good at finding an explanation for things. It's easy to understand how Stephen King could get inspired to write The Shining when standing in the Stanley's empty rooms. The feeling of loneliness and the unknown surround you. <laughs> Here's the top to the servant stairs. The top to the stairs. children way back then so you can imagine having to play in that small area so that's why on my tours if I have a child I love it because we invite them to come see us and that's when all the cameras will start to malfunction or go out of focus okay. up in this hallway this is the hallway where that night they'll have the doors knocked on them mm -hmm. TVs malfunction because this is where the children play <laughs> okay, this is the children's hallway. Let's right, see if they ate their candy. No, their candy is so there. Salt water taffy. 
One of our main goals at the Stanley was to spend the night in room 401 and film the entire night while sleeping. With the lights off, we prepared for the night, making sure there's no one else in the room with us. We ran our night vision cameras all night while we slept, hoping to catch something on film. We recorded over 14 hours of video while we were sleeping, and captured a three minute piece of film that surprised all of us. As you can see in the background, there is a picture hanging above the bed. You could clearly see the bathroom light through the door in the reflection. The door doesn't move in over 14 hours of recording, except during this three minute time period. Keep your eyes on the bathroom light in the reflection. The door starts to move back and forth slowly, then shuts. We have sped up this piece of film so you can see the entire video while the door was closed. Suddenly the door opens back up, goes to its original place, and doesn't move again for the rest of the night. I was really surprised to see the door moving in the video. It's such a short piece. Um, but after reviewing it all, there's about 14 hours of video to go through, the door doesn't move at all. And just during that one uh, few minute segment, all of a sudden the door starts to move and it shuts and then opens back up. It really can't be explained. I would say that it may have to do with the wind, um, but why in the 14 hours didn't it move any other time? And uh, there was nothing else moving in the room. It just can't be explained. The elevator tried to kill me every chance it got. It wanted to electrocute me. It just didn't have enough power. It just gave me shocks. The elevator's possessed. Um, our room was really nice. Like we didn't get any odd sensations in our room at all, despite it being one of the four most haunted rooms in the hotel. It wasn't. There was no like creepy vibes. You didn't think that anything was going on. You didn't feel unsafe, which made all the difference to me knowing that, you know, I wasn't in a room where like I felt like I was going to wake up with my head on the table. I would definitely go back to Stanley. We had so much fun and if it was a trip that we could do again, I would redo do it. I thought it was pretty funny that Sam felt something in the closet. Um, I would have thought it was funnier if something grabbed her hair and pulled it, but that's just me. My experience was really good. We had a really good time, the staff was really friendly, and it was just gorgeous up there in the mountains. On the first night we stayed, I slept in the king size bed with Samantha and Cullen, and I could have swore that all night long, Cullen was spooning me. So that was really strange, and I was uncomfortable. But when we got home, Cullen clearly was on the other side of the bed when we looked at the footage. So, I don't know what that's all about, <laughs> but that was really weird. So then the second night, I slept on the cot with Stacy, the roll away bed, and I heard pacing back and forth all night long right by my head. So, I think that maybe Lord Dunraven was upset because he couldn't spoon me all night while I was on the cot. Stacy changed it from a hockey game to a CNN. Plane crash! Across the 